Well, let me just say, first of all, I want to thank you for your prayers and support uh, while I was in Tanzania. And some people, you know, when I tell them what to Tanzania, they say, oh, that's nice. And then they'll say, well, well, where is it? <laughs> so let me just tell you, give you an idea where it is. It's in Africa, and it's below Kenya. So it's down more south uh, in that continent, as you can think of it. And uh, borders Kenya, borders Mozambique, Uganda. Uh, it borders the Indian Ocean. It borders Lake Victoria. And uh, what I want to do tonight, if I could just for a moment, just kind of review uh, some, some uh, scriptural truth with you. I won't take long with it, but it fits into my presentation. And I'm not going to turn in the Bible tonight. I'm just going to uh, uh, reference it, and, uh, and you'll just have to trust that that's what the Bible says. I, I have preached on it before. But, you know, when the Lord was here, one of his ministries, he had, he had two ministries, one to prepare the gospel, preach the gospel. The other was to start a church. He was a church planner. And when he got all done, before he was crucified, he had about 120 that made up that church. That church was nomadic in the sense that it traveled with the Lord wherever he went, of course. But then when he was crucified, it, it, it settled in Jerusalem. And that's where it, its location was. When the Lord rose from the dead, he went back to the church that he created, that he built. And he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every person needs to hear the gospel. And then he went on and said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and teaching them all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. In other words, what he commanded that church is for every one of his churches. And so uh, on the day of Pentecost, uh, if you remember the, the story, there were Jews from all around the world that were gathered for that feast. Uh, under every nation under heaven, says the Bible. And the Holy Spirit came upon that church to do the power of God, to do the work of God with the power of God. And uh, if you remember the account, uh, they spoke the wonderful works of God in the different languages. Then Peter stood up and preached the gospel, and 3,000 people got saved. They not only got saved, but they got baptized and added to that church. In other words, they stayed in Jerusalem. Boy, what a, what a, what a wonderful problem to have, amen, to have all those people moving into that area. Well, uh, they were instructed by the apostles to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And they were taught to baptize the believers and add them to the church and reproduce churches or go do likewise. It took persecution to get those men to, to leave that area. They were comfortable. And uh, the, Paul saw, persecuted the church, and so they, they spread out. I believe they went back to their nations. Where would you go if you had to leave town? Go back home. And when they went back to that nation, I believe that they had that, that command and that vision to preach the gospel to every creature. And God blessed it. People got saved. They got baptized. They were, the churches were started. And those churches that were started went out and they started churches. Same way, preach the gospel, baptize the believers, uh, organize the church, add them to the church through baptism, teach them the commandments of Christ, and just keep spreading out. And when I went to Tanzania... Oh, by the way, the end result of that, according to Colossians 1, verse 23, every creature under heaven heard the gospel. Now, the problem with us, we, we, we just think that's impossible. But not with a God in whom all things are possible. And so we're told that through God's plan, go preach the gospel. God will give an increase, that's a promise. Baptize those believers, uh, add them to the church, teach the commandments of Christ, and go reproduce. And with that plan and with that promise, every person can receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. I just want to say to you tonight, that's what I witnessed over in Tanzania. I witnessed the book of Acts in action. It was tremendous. I started out with a man by the name of Pastor Christopher Matabi. You, we had him here for our missions conference through uh, uh, live stream. Pastor uh, Bezzi, Bible Baptist Church in Des Salaam, Tanzania. That's a large, large city in Tanzania. That's where I flew into. It's an international airport. He has, uh, he's been a pastor, I believe, for about 18 years there and uh, had a burden and a passion to go start churches. Out of his church, he has sent four pastors, four men to go start churches in regions. One's close by, but the others are far away. Uh, one, as a matter of fact, is in, um, uh, he is in Mozambique. I didn't go there because uh, that's a very dangerous place, and the pastor wouldn't let me go there. He said, best stay away from it. But anyways, Christopher Matabi, he sent four men out. One is uh, Joseph Nizali, and uh, he planted the Kaui Baptist Church. Another man's John Thomas, and he planted uh, Dutwa Baptist Church. 
Another man is Yusuf Magoma. He was sent out of uh, due to our Baptist church. I want you to get a picture here. So here's these men going out, and then here's a man sending a man out. Amen? Just like I said, just like the book of Acts. And then um, uh, Brother Lukunga, Daniel, he was sent out of busy Baptist church. That would be Brother Christopher's church. And he planted a church that I cannot pronounce the name, but I guarantee you he started it. And then out of that church, he has sent out two men to go in the regions beyond their village to start churches. Uh, Moses Palate and Daniel Lashave, Lashave and uh, the, uh, Palate started uh, Masangia Bible Baptist Church, and, and Brother Lashave started uh, Nora Bible Baptist Church. And get this, Brother Lashave, Lashave has gone to another village that's two hours away. I'm sorry, three hours away by, uh, by walking, three hours. And uh, he had started a church there, and I got to preach at that church. And uh, now it'll be a whole lot easier, brother, with a motorcycle. Praise the Lord. And uh, he started that church, and he's praying for God to raise a pastor up, either within those people that are getting saved. They have about 40 attending now. Or someone maybe in his own church uh, would uh, uh, take that church. That's the book of Acts. That's churches multiplying churches. It was exciting to see that. The other thing that was exciting about these churches, I, every church that I visited, uh, they had men that the pastor was working with, uh, teaching them and training them, discipling them to be leaders in the church. Every one of them had this. I'm talking about churches in the bush. You know what the bush is? It's out in the remote areas, outside of this, the big cities out in the countryside where you, where you don't think there's any people till it's t church time and suddenly the building is filled because people from all over are coming to the church. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. And uh, my, they, 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 are, they, are, they got people coming to the church and in these remote areas, uh, I witnessed that and it was such a tremendous testimony for me to see that. I was so excited. And the one conclusion, one, the last church I was in, Brother Pilates, the, 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 I, I walked out, I mean, it's just open land, and I looked around, and I realized, I don't think an American missionary is ever going to get here, but these nationals who are here can get saved Amen. and called by God to go to the next town and start a church in these remote areas and multiply churches, and fill Tanzania with the gospel. I walked away with that from this trip. And there's something else I walked away with. We Baptist Church has been so blessed in America. We need to get behind these poor national preachers that have a vision to go take the gospel. To go, all of them had a vision to go to the next town, to go into regions. Every one of them, want, they're involved in church planting. And we who are so rich in America, we need to have a burden for these men and get behind them, not just in Tanzania, but all around these third world nations. This is just a sample of what's going on in these third world nations. Just a little bit. They don't need a lot. They don't have a lot to begin with. They know how to do much without, with little. Just a little bit, just a little bit, maybe uh, you know, 300 a month, maybe some, 200 a month. I don't know. It's not much. It's not much out of our pockets, but it's much for them. And it enables them to get away from some of those daily tasks of taking care of the family to have more time to taking care of the church and multiplying churches. So that's what I walked away with. I, I'll tell you, brethren, when I called Brother Christopher and I said, I'm coming, he wanted me to come, he wanted me to come, he wanted me to come. Finally, I said, okay, I'm coming. And I said, but here's what I want to do. I want to go visit every one of these men that you're working with. And uh, that took 18 days of traveling, constant travel from the time I hit Tanzania at 4 o'clock in the morning. You know what that's like, brother. To the time that I got back on that plane on November 23rd to fly back home, I was on the move. We traveled by airplane. <laughs> 
because we couldn't travel, but the roads are terrible. Amen, brother. They're not bad in the city, but boy, get outside the city. They are bad. And uh, so I had to go by plane. I had to travel by public bus. That was an experience, you know, uh, pretty crowded. One guy came on bus with a, with a chicken. I'm telling you, I was expecting a pig to get on the bus pretty soon. I traveled by bus. I traveled by motorcycle. I probably put 150 miles on my, you know, where. And uh, I'll tell you what, there was one time I was on that road. I was hurting so bad. Finally, I said, stop. I got to have a break. I just got up and stood and go, ah. Oh. <laughs> and then I got back on the motor. Christopher got a kick out of that. He still reminds me about that. That's not built for that stuff for me. Amen? Maybe for them, but not for me. So by, by bus, by train, or by not by train, amen, but uh, by bus and, and uh, some churches we walk to, but most churches, to get to them, the roads are so bad you'd never get a vehicle to them. But motorcycles will get to them. That's why they're so essential in this ministry, getting a motorcycles. And so uh, that's how we got to them. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, you know, that's, I, that's what the Lord put in my heart. You know, I, I, I've been preaching it here in America. But when you walk to a field and what you've been preaching by faith from your heart, and you see by sight what is going on, it brings tears to your eyes to see what can be done. If only we would get behind these men and help them out. I just want to say to you tonight, again, I appreciate so much my church. I appreciate the way you pray for us. I appreciate your support. You've been so good to Debbie and I. And uh, I love my pastor. And uh, he is my pastor. I know I was a pastor before, but I'm not pastor now. Uh, he's my pastor, and I'm accountable to him. That's why when he wouldn't let me speak, I didn't persist. I wanted to, but I didn't. I just walked off the platform. I figured I'd have my time tonight. These slides I'm about to show you, we're going to have to move fast on them. Listen, this is the first time I've done this, and I, I did not realize how long it took to put those slides on that PowerPoint, and I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm from the dark ages. I'm a dinosaur, and uh, watch it. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how it's going to go, but we're going to go at it. And the thing is, it's going to be hard. All right, this is Brother Matabi, Christopher, his uh, three boys, and uh, his wife, and I forgot her name, but um, that's his wife. And so, oops, went the wrong way. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go through them fast. Some I'll stop and talk about a little bit. Here we go. Yeah. That's there, brother. That's his daughter. She's, uh, she's off to a, um, she's off to a girls' school. And the reason being, uh, he was afraid of the influence of the boys in the school would not be good on her. You say, well, how can, how can he do that? Is, I thought they were poor. They are. But I want to tell you something about Christopher. He walks by faith. I was amazed watching this man. These pastors we visit, he'd walk over to them, give them money to, to get this and get that. He just ministered to them. And uh, he's a man of faith. And so let me move on here. Uh, I want to show you their kitchen. She does a lot of cooking on that right there while I was there, if I was there. Usually I was on the road. And then uh, there's a stove. They got a stove finally. Just got that not too long ago. There's her sink, and that's her kitchen. How do you like that? Here's a banana tree in his yard. Okay, and that's uh, Brother, uh, let, me get my <laughs> let me get my cheat list. <laughs> All right, this is Brother Joseph. I'll probably call him by the first name. And uh, he started, uh, Brother Joseph started at Vicawi Bible Baptist Church out of uh, Brother Christopher's church. One of the things I did, I took a Frisbee over with me, a bunch of Frisbees, and I gave them to the kids of the pastor of the church. Man, they love that thing. So 
I'm going to be known for bringing Frisbee to Tanzania. That's going to be my fame. They had so much fun with that thing. They loved it. We gave uh, an English Bible to every one of these men and told them that they need to learn English. Amen. Uh, this is where I preached. These folks were there at the Kawi Chapel Bible Baptist Church. Uh, that was a Sunday morning. Uh, we had, uh, I think, three get saved. One was um, a uh, Muslim girl. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, this right here, <clears throat> this lady here and this husband, they donated the land for that property. And, uh, uh, and so the church built in this house. Brethren, they're dirt poor. They really are. And what a testimony of those two. She said, she, I couldn't understand her, but she, I knew she wanted me to stand still. And she went to her bedroom and came out and she showed me her Bible. I think she uses that, don't you? Oh, she loves the Bible. Uh, this is inside Brother Joseph's church, and they're quoting scriptures. The girls come up, and, and the boys, and one by one, they go down and quote a verse. Okay, uh, there I am. Okay, that's a Muslim girl that got saved, 18 years old. After the service, she came up to Pastor uh, Christopher and said, I want to be saved. Could you please explain more about the gospel? I got to sit down and through an interpreter, uh, see her accept Christ as Lord and Savior. Pray for her. That's the baptism. Uh, that they had there it was right outside the church. <clears throat> I baptized um, two people in that by the authority of the church. There's one, there's two. Uh, this, every, they don't have a morning and evening service. They have a service that lasts just about all day is what it is. And uh, because when you get done, you got to eat. These are Baptists. Amen? And so they're, they're out and back uh, after the service and they get cooking. You'd like to see that. That's the Indian Ocean. That was nice. Now, this is Brother Christopher's church, and I'll have more to say about that later on. And uh, there he is. And uh, that's his church right there. And uh, that is a, yeah, I can't remember what kind of roof is, but it's, it's one that they have to replace every eight years. I think it's coconut leaf trees, leaf uh, roof, but it um, keeps the rain out. And he has a plan for building a new church. We'll see that in a minute. And, but he's got all the plans drawn up, brother. I mean, you thought this was American. Boy, well, he's got everything all lined out. He's ready to go. They've raised by giving a dollar a, a, every Sunday. Uh, they've raised, and over I don't know how many years this has been going on. Christopher's a visionary. He, he has a vision. They raised around $86,000 to build that church. These are poor people, folks. He said, how is that possible? Need we ask? <laughs> okay. Uh, this is Thomas. He is, a, uh, he is um, uh, translating English literature into Swahili. He is an assistant pastor to, to Christopher and does a lot. Uh, Christopher's on the road a lot, and so he fills in for him and does the preaching. This is their kitchen at church. Just thought you'd like to see that, you ladies. And uh, they, they were having visitation that day, and they're cooking up a bunch of rice. So they're inviting people to come down. Saturday to come on down and they'll feed them and they'll preach the gospel to them. Uh, that's just a little bit of a desolat. And there's some rich homes there, no question about that. Uh, most poor homes, but some rich. Then we flew over to Wanza, and that's where I went to uh, a couple of churches. This is one of my motel rooms I got to stay in. That is Lake Victoria, isn't that nice? This is the bus I rode on. It was empty, but it wasn't. It started out, it was full, and I got, made sure I got in the front seat. Amen. And I made sure that Christopher sat next to me. Amen. Okay. Uh, this is so common. They carry things on their head. Unbelievable. Look at that. My goodness. And this is uh, the market. And so many people, so busy every day. Here's a guy sharpening knives. You got a knife to sharpen? There he is. You bring it down to him, and he makes that wheel go around, and he sharpens the knife. They have beautiful furniture. Uh, this is my second motel room that I had up in uh, uh, Dutois. Um, it came with a, a bathroom and a shower. Now, let me say something about this shower. What they do is every morning, and Christopher made sure they did it for me. He took such good care of me. He sure respected my age. Well, anyways, he, uh, he took such good care. Anyway, so here's your shower. They bring you a, a bucket of hot water. You mix it with cold water. You've got a cup, and you pour it over. That's your shower. No kidding. Most of the time, that's how I took my shower. By the way, they're, they're, they were having a drought there, and they really needed rain. 
Uh, there's a guy bringing the water to fill up the buckets. Amen. Uh, there's where they draw, the, all the water's drawn from wells. Uh, on my way to, to one of the churches, uh, Christopher Stott, there's a bunch of men there. He said, Pastor, start preaching. All right. So I preached. And when we got done, seven men accept, and a couple ladies accept the Lord as Savior. And Brother uh, John Thomas, who's in the middle there, he'll be working with them. This is John Thomas' family. Due to our Baptist church, wonderful family. Again, we gave him a Bible. And uh, that's the folks I preached to. That was not a Sunday. This was a, this was a Saturday. And I had a dis discipleship class there, about three hours, and also preached. And a and, uh, wonderful, wonderful church. This, this is how they started out, folks. <laughs> that was their first church. I just wanted to show you that. Amen. Okay, there we are again. There's that Frisbee man. They love that. Um, young ladies like her, when they meet a man, uh, especially an elder like me, and when they meet a man, they bow and they shake their hand. And so there you go. Uh, I was in another place, and these ladies, this is another tribe, they come over, and I was there standing. These, these ladies would come over and they go like this. I thought, what do they want? Lice? I don't see any lice. You know, what am I looking for? And then Christopher came, oh, oh, touch her head. Really? And I touched her and she brought it back up and went on her way. That was her greeting. That was different. There I am. Amen. In my suit, praise the Lord. Now I'm in a, uh, this is Brother Magoma's church. This would be the, uh, uh, the uh, Igiwa Baptist Church. A lot of people there giving his Bible. Amen. We, we, 240 Bibles we handed out to these uh, six different churches that I visited. And uh, so we were handing them out to the, uh, to the members. Praise the Lord. And there I am baptizing again. Boy, there was not much water in that thing. I really had to put them under. And, uh, you know, I, th I thought I was going to have to start splashing water on them. It was so shallow. But uh, I got them under. They came up sputtering. But uh, I got them under. And I baptized by the authority of that church. I baptized 15 people that day. There's a the frisbee again. Now, there is the picture that pastor's been talking about. This is at Brother Pilate's church, the last church I visited. And uh, you can't see the chicken, but there uh, on the other side of Christopher, he's holding them like this. Those poor chickens. Man, their feet were tied so they couldn't fly away. And, uh, so, and there's my driver. Three of us. By the way, getting this uh, motorcycle for Brother Lashavi, I guarantee you he'll have four people on that going to church. I guarantee it. They just pile them on. Amen. It's close quarters, that's for sure. And then here's another. Here's Brother Lashavi. I'm visiting his home, and I just got done preaching at his church, which was not a Sunday, but the people came out, and I was giving perfume. Uh, oh, uh, a perfume bar. Now, this is their bathrooms. I don't know why bathrooms fascinate me, but uh, I like to take pictures. Maybe because Brother Pastor and I have gone through some experiences with them. At least I have over in India. Amen. That's their toilet paper up there. I'll tell you what. Wow. I'm handing out Bibles again. There's another lady coming along. Now, they all honor us. Every church did. And they would come up and put a robe around each one of us. And that was an honor. This was my other driver who took me that first picture you saw with my motorcycle, he was my taxi. These are all taxis. And that's coming back. And just some landscape. I'll just go that quickly through it. And uh, just some of the landscape. That, uh, they have cows. Thought that'd be interesting to you. Amen. I just got kicked out of that little thing. Sh goats and walking all over the place. And uh, these are rice fields. You can't really see a lot of it, but... Uh, this is rice season, but the rain's not come. I told Christopher, we prayed, and I said, Christopher, when I leave, the rain will come. Guess what? The rain came. Amen. This is inside the church where I preach. This is Brother Magoma's church. Some of these rocks, something. This is nighttime. They're busy there. Amen. Beautiful flowers. Oh, there it is again. That's their toilets. Yeah. You got to try using one of those. Okay, here we go. This was um, this is where Brother Magoma started out when he went and started that church. <coughs> this is home. That's his house now. And we just want you to know they got Coca-Cola there. Amen. Uh, that's a, that's a, one of the choirs. 
singing beautiful music. They sing hymns like ours, and uh, uh, very interesting how they sing. And here's a, this is back to Brother John Thomas, where I had the discipleship class, and there's those people. That's who I worked with. I think I showed that picture. This is interesting. Those three boxes up there are the offering boxes. The zaka is the tithe. The middle one is missions. The, the one on uh, Sadaka, S-A-D-A-K-A, that's offering for beautifying the church building. And what they do, here's how they do their offering. It was done in every church where I went for a church service. They sing, and people walk up and put the offering in the different ones, and then they go back to their seats. So, Pastor, we need to start singing. And then we'll walk up and put our offering in the offering plate. Uh, but he won't do it. Don't worry, folks. Amen. Uh, they, they, they practice missions. Every one of these churches are supporting a missionary, $5 a month. It works. Amen. I love that. Uh, oh, I inter- <laughs> when I was eating at John Thomas, I said, You know, they eat with their hands, but I eat with a fork. They were nice to me. And I said, but I still got my hands dirty. So I said, do you have um, any napkins? Well, I didn't have any napkins. They don't use napkins. And John Thomas, the next day, went out and found some, bought them. And wherever I went, that package of napkins was there for me to use. I think I introduced napkins. This man, we were walking back to our room, and and, and they had the papyrus tree, and I was admiring them. The guy said, of course, in his language, and Chris was interpreting, come in, come in, come in. And he said, I'll give you one. And so he cut one down, two down, gave it to us, and then he asked what we were doing, and I preached the gospel to them, that whole family. Four of them got saved, and they're right next to the church, and John Thomas is working with them. Isn't that exciting? Ah, oh, praise the Lord. There's an offering thing in another church. I'll tell you what. Oh, they're getting ready for a baptism. Here's some of the ladies there. Uh, this, uh, Right here is uh, Brother Magoma, two men he's working with and training and leaders in the church. Uh, there's some of their, uh, there's uh, Brother Magoma's church after the service. Um, and again, let's see, that wasn't even a, yeah, that was a Sunday. I preached there Sunday, okay? And inside, what have you. Oh, back here, there's the choir. They come up and sing, do beautiful singing. There, a lot of kids, a lot of kids getting honored again, yay. Preaching, okay, we keep going here. I thought you'd be interested in this. You see what looks like um, beaks in that pot? That's what they are. Chicken heads. Really? I couldn't believe it. I said, you actually eat those? And Brother Magoma said, watch. And he ate them. And then, there it is, a little closer. I thought you wanted a little closer look. And then, the feet. They eat those too. This was a lady that was taking, tending to our hotel. We were staying, you know, making sure I had the hot water and all that. Kind of, wonderful, sweet lady. One day, I think about the fourth day I was there, I, I, I asked her, do you know if you have a home in heaven when you die? And she said, no, I don't. And through Christopher, I witnessed to her, she accepted the Lord as Savior. Amen. And uh, she's near uh, John Thomas. John Thomas is doing follow-up with her. Ah, uh, there's a bus, the bus station. Just some more pictures quickly. Soccer, big there. Oh, they're big on flowers, too. And uh, they have a lot of uh, roadside uh, flower displays, displays for sale. That's Lake Victoria flying back to Desalam. There's some good some fish eating. Them. That fish was pretty good. And uh, that, that wasn't curry, brother. That was a coconut sauce. It was real good. There's a boy. Oh, let me go back. That's a couple in Mozambique. Pray for them. Mozambique right now is a hotbed. They're having a lot of trouble was rebels. And uh, so he's right in it. And he's from Mozambique. He moved to Des Salon to get work. He got saved through that church, Bezzy Baptist Church. Got trained and God called him to go back to his people and start a church. Woo! Praise the Lord. Ah, there's some ladies showing off for me. Look at that lady. She just showed. No. <laughs> ah, these are some of the buildings. That right there is a kiln for making uh, blocks. They do a lot of that. And lots of cows in a row, just like India, brother. Just like India. But they don't worship them. They eat them. And uh, here's a road, a typical road right there. Isn't that something? 
And there's, a, there's a, the church that Brother Lashavi is starting. It's just a tent. There's a, they got their poles up to make a mud church building. It'll be made out of mud. And there's some of the people. Oh, my. I'll tell you what. This is exciting just to go through these. Look at that little girl. Amen. All right. And uh, these are leaders in the church, I think. This guy that gave the property for the church, so they've got the property. And uh, he, he got saved, and he's a part of that new church. And uh, this guy's a leader in the church with that blue outfit on. I'm sorry for these being cut off. Well, this is part of my mistakes I made, so you'll just have to live with it. Uh, this is a school. When I went to that village to preach, the village prepared for me to, to greet me and, and give me a special day there. And the school learned an English song to sing to me. It was really good those kids did. And by the way, they have no water at that time. Those kids were thirsty. And uh, so we were giving them some water to drink. Cute little kids. They just sang beautiful. And this, uh, they got in their traditional cultural garbs for me. You'll see some more of that later. Uh, there's a school. Yeah, get honored, getting honored again. There's a school, amen. There they are in their traditional garb. Those are ladies, just in case you're wondering. There's a mud that they make, and handing out Bibles again. There's a cop. That's, just showing you some of the landscape here, real quick. Aren't I going fast? This is a better road, but didn't last long. Uh, oh, yeah. I took this picture. Brother Batali's, and he has an interesting culture there. The wife sleeps in another room. Man, that wouldn't go over with me. And uh, they have separate rooms at night. And this is her room. And she went over to the bed and and by the way, this is a church that there, there was a, another church in the U.S. that helped them out to uh, give them some money to put a tin roof on their house, on their home. And she lifted the, the mat, she lifted that, those covers, and there were, board, there were logs. And that's what she slept on every night. And she said, oh, she said, hard on back. And uh, so we prayed about it. And uh, she's getting a mattress. Amen. I'm excited. There she is, sweet lady. And there's her kitchen, and that's, uh, that's Brother Patali, his wife and, and daughter. She was visiting, and uh, he's uh, he had a powwow there. Cole again, there he is, okay. And he's a papyrus tree that's on his property. That's the side of his house. That's looking outside his house. He had a nice view. Beautiful, huh? Okay, and there's his stew. And, and then this is Brother, uh, let me make sure I pronounce this right. Yeah, Lakunga, Brother Lakunga. Uh, Sent out by uh, Bessie Baptist Church. That's his wife and family. We visited them, gave them Bibles, amen. And uh, we also gave him an English Bible. He speaks a little English, so, that, you know, he's going to work on it. This is his church. You see that bad roof right there? It leaks like a sieve. He was telling me about it. And uh, there's his baptistry. Soccer, big thing. And that's the folks I preached. That wasn't even a Sunday. They were waiting for me to come. <sighs> Wouldn't it be nice like that in America, huh? <laughs> All righty. Okay, let me, and so uh, I got back home, made a phone call, and the roof is going to be replaced. Amen. Okay, back on the road. Brother uh, Lashavi's church, and... Uh, by the way, all these people have built their churches. You know, they didn't use American money to do it. They built them. Took a lot of time, but they did it. Okay, that's the office. <laughs> that's inside where the Chavez church, and they had a choir there that day. This is not a Sunday. There's this uh, young men there. He had a lot of young men in that church, boy. And uh, there's the choir. Brother Chavez talking. There's the choir again. Okay, keep going here. Yeah. Amen. They honored me again, and I gave, gave him a Bible and a bunch of Bibles. Praise the Lord. There's the group. You don't have them all in that picture, but they're there, and uh, that's who I got. To, I did a discipleship class. There's two boys that got saved that day. Praise the Lord. Okay? There's that all. That, that so impressed me right there. And you know, when Christopher came, he's been to our nation two times. I got to take him around the second time. I wasn't with Help Ministries when he came. Well, I just started help ministry, so I didn't have him. But um, he's gone back with these ideas about 
mission conferences, and he's taught these men to do this. Every one of these churches are doing this, all six of them giving offerings like that. There's my discipleship class. This is inside his church. He's got some sheep. There's his wife. There's his home. There's his cow. Amen. I'll show some of these pictures. There's a road right there. I'm telling you, you wouldn't get a car down that. That's a, that's a, actually, that's a mosque out in the middle of nowhere. Muslims are there. Uh, and this is some Muslim family that got around me. There's my driver to take me to Brother Batala's church. Here we go. He, he took Brother Christopher, and there's Brother Patala's church. And they're getting ready for a baptism. And pouring it, water in. Well, I tell you, look at that stuff. But it was water. And I got to baptize there. I baptized uh, three there. And that's a church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, here's the chickens in this church. I sat down there, and I, I heard this fluttering noise, and I looked over. There were five chickens in a corner, and their feet were tied. I thought, my, what's, what's going on here? And so they started the singing for the offering. Ladies came up, five of them, and one got the chicken, handed each one. They got back to the uh, back end of the church, and as they were singing, they walked down and put those chickens at the offering plate. Not in it, <laughs> but at the offering plate. That was their offering. That was their tithe. And uh, Brother Palati will sell them at the market. And by the way, he gave us two, though. Those are the two that two went back with us. He wanted to give us all five, and Christopher said, sure. And I said, no, we're not putting five chickens on this motorcycle. Because I knew that I'd have to be holding some. And I wasn't about ready to do that. There's Brother Patala. Pilates Church, great crowd came up. Brother, that's in the middle of nowhere. There's no houses around that thing. Oh, it was great. There they are. Amen. Getting ready for the ride. You won't believe this, but in these little villages, in these remote areas, every village has a pool table. I said, stop. Am I seeing what I think I see? A pool table. Yeah. And boy, there's kids around it and adults. This gentleman right here, fine policeman, over in Tanzania, they have uh, road checks. And they'll pull you over. If they find something wrong with your car, you're going to pay a fine for it. Right there. Well, we were heading out to um, uh, Tonga, and Christopher got pulled over. The lady stepped out there, and she walked up. She said, you were speeding. Christopher, I didn't know I was speeding. Yes. She said, and she saw me. She said, who are you? I said, I'm John Mills. I'm from the United States of America. Oh. I said, by the way, good to meet you. I reached over and shook her hand. And she said, go on, go on. <laughs> so I learned something. If I just say I'm from the United States of America, they won't find us. So I got myself a, um, a tourist hat, you know, showing that I was a tourist. Amen. And I put that thing on cowboy hat. We got pulled over two more times on the way back home. We come up and say, hey, a policeman. I'm John Mills from America, United States. Oh, can I have my picture with you? Yes, come out. He took my, I took my picture and he sent us on our way. We never had to, never had to do any of this. You know what I'm talking about? I'm being careful what I say because I might get back to them the next time I'm there. They'll remember me. There it is. I can't believe that. Oh, I'm going backwards. Okay. All right. Quickly. Oh, they sell, that's, how, that's how they sell mattresses, you know. All the stores are just open like that. And by the way, they have what you need. You may have to look for it, but you'll find it eventually. It's amazing. There's the other guy. And again, I'm sorry for the cutoff. I messed up on that. He's the next guy we met. <laughs> Went through the same thing with him. <laughs> but this guy, he said, oh, you know, where are you from? I said, Alabama. Alabama. Well, he says, I might come over and visit you. I said, sure. He said, I want your number. So Christopher gave him his number. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. Here's, now watch these next three pictures. This is how they, the farm over there. This is how they dig the land up. One, two. 
Wait a minute, let me do this again. Ah, uh, it's backwards. Actually, it's like this. One, two, three. That's how they dig the land up. That's how they farm. Wow. The big fields they, they do. Again, land. Oh, a pineapple season, brother. Man, they were delicious. I'm just, oh, this right here. These are, these are not real people. These are statues. Uh, these are, uh, you see that like the yoke on them. And these are slaves that were captured in other tribes by tribes that were brought to a port in Tanzania, sold at the market for slaves. See, the tribes, I don't know if you know this, but tribes captured tribes and put them into slavery. They got money for it. And they had this here. It's a, a, you know, a monument, just to remember that. And I thought it was kind of impressive. Again, just there's the Indian. This is where they shipped them out. They brought those slaves here. And uh, this is the boats. Not, that's not the boats they use, but these boats are on low tide or being loaded with a bunch of stuff. They'll be taken over to Zanzibar, which is a big tourist island. But that's the prison where, where they brought all those slaves. It's so sad to see. It was so oppressive in that city. You could sense the demonic oppression, really, brother. I couldn't wait to get out of it. I told I said to Christopher, I said, Christopher, let's go. There's something not right here. I was taking a picture, and I had this guy with no shirt on and a little turban. He come up to me, and he wanted to fight me for taking this picture. I said, let's get out of here. And I didn't want to hurt the guy. Amen? So I said, let's go. And here we go. All right. This is down in Desalon. Just showing you a little bit of it. Do a lot of furniture. And that's those uh, side, roadside. Ah, there's one. There you go. I believe Kentucky Fried Chicken is number one as far as being around the world. It beats McDonald's. Oh, this is, this is Christopher's Market where he goes and gets his stuff. Just give you a little bit of that. And he eats that. There you go. Yeah. And this is a grocery store in the plaza. It's a very rich plaza. It's for the rich people. But it looks just like ours, doesn't it? Christopher said to me, he said, we don't shop here. <laughs> it's too expensive. That's Christopher's home. He built that a few years ago. I'm so happy for him. It's a nice house. Of course, uh, um, you know, they, they have electricity. They just got that. Praise the Lord. And there's, I'm, I'm on my way out. And there's Christopher and I to say goodbye. Huh? 